Tim is probably one of the most energetic people we know. Always happiest when there's a challenge to be had. He's positive, enthusiastic and cheery. We'll make it, mate. We'll make it. But then it changes. You know, to start a day with, with lethargy and feeling really well, it's so, so frustrating. These symptoms are all because of a tick bite in Scotland 20 years ago. He is certain that was the moment he contracted Lyme disease, an infectious disease caused by the bacterium Borrelia. I came back from Scotland and one morning I woke up going, oh, there's something attached to my groin. <laughs> I thought, oh, that's quite small. <laughs> and uh, I found this tick on my groin. And I thought, ah, just, just squashed it and threw it in the bin, put nothing of it. But as, uh, as I took a closer inspection, I had a bullseye rash about that big on my inner groin. No, and thought, yeah, okay, that's fine. Did nothing about it at all. So that was 20 years ago. And over that 20 year period, things have happened. Uh, my wrist and my elbows are really, really, really stiff. And I just don't want to work. It's very, very hard work. To help try and inform others about what it's like living with Lyme disease, Tim has been keeping a video diary. If I move my head really quickly, the actual brain feels like it's actually kind of a second behind the, uh, the rest of my, my body. Anyway, good day. I've been running for about an hour with some sprint training mixed up for my hockey match on, uh, on, on Saturday. So anyway, a good day so far. For more than two years, he's been recording the good, the bad and the ugly, the tests, the advice and his efforts to feel normal again. I wake up in the morning and I just know that I'm going to probably have only 50% of my energy I normally have. So my, it's like memory fogging, it's, it, you're a thick head, you feel like you're kind of, um, you're frowning, you're stressful. Um, it almost feels like your brain's actually expanding and putting pressure on the back of your eyes. So that affects you kind of mentally. Moving on from there, sore eyes. My knees um, or my major joints will ache, but that ache will move around the body. One day, maybe my knees, next day it's my, my, my wrists, or it could be my, my elbows or my neck. It's like, really? My muscles, you know, I'm a sportsman and I, and I ache because I play sport and when you get older, you get a lot more knocks and, and aches, but my muscles will ache as well. So once again, it's like, really? I got a hockey game in about 15 minutes. I don't want to play. My head's pounding. I feel very, very tired. My knees have started to ache as well, which is really, really frustrating. I've got a really tough game out there. So physically I'm fine, but mentally, I just don't want to do it. Anyway, within about 15 minutes, I'll be absolutely fine by the time I get my blood up and get myself warmed up, but it's so, so frustrating. Insomnia is a nightmare. Uh, last night, for instance, for some reason, I, I couldn't go to sleep. I went Sunday to sleep at- seeing me. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know. So uh, at two o'clock I went to bed because I couldn't sleep. So I eventually got to sleep at two, two o'clock. I was wide awake at five. It's like, right, so my sleep pants are completely turned upside down. So you have that fatigue coming from lack of sleep and also from your head feeling quite thick and horrible. Just had a normal, uh, very restless night, um, which I'm not too bothered about now because I get used to that. The worst thing is the cold sweat. Um, just woke up twice, uh, absolutely soaking wet, very, very cold and not very pleasant and uh, not particularly nice to get back into bed and try to go back to sleep again but that's the way Lyme is. Sometimes. Probably 10 years ago I was in London with my wife and we have a long weekend in London and I was getting really excited for it and I got on the train, got into Charing Cross and I got out the, tr out the train and I was absolutely exhausted and, and I'm a fit guy, I play a lot of sport and I was walking down the steps from Charing Cross to the embankment and I was exhausted, I was aching, I didn't want to be in town. I thought, this is really bizarre. This is this just isn't right. You know, this is like weekend we saved up for wanted to do it, go and see a show. I wanted to go home. I thought, right, that was my the journey started the right. There's something definitely wrong with this chap called Tim Pilby. Just uh, walked down the uh, steps from Charing Cross to Embankment, and this is when it all happened. Anyway, memories uh, have come flooding back this morning, but I feel really good today. Had a long weekend in London and on the way back home. The NHS says that Tim doesn't have Lyme disease. His blood test was negative. He is Borrelia free. But that test has been shown to give false negatives and false positives. And after a while I thought, I've got Lyme. Despite what the doctors think, I've got, definitely got Lyme. So I just kept on, I did nothing about it, accepted it a wee bit. 
But then over the last between five and 10 years, he got worse and worse and worse. And probably about four years ago, I thought, hang on a minute, I need to do something about this. And, uh, and that's when I started, I uh, actually bumped into a friend who's just moved to Sweden and he's got a friend of his or a colleague who, who is a Lyme practitioner. And so, and he's, he uses his kinesiology where he sits over your body and he, he, he touches you and it's all a bit kind of slightly kind of cranky. But within five minutes, he said to me, I've got Lyme. And he told me what type of Lyme I had. And he said, you got Lyme? I went, after all this time, so, so this guy is in Sweden, or is this guy here? Yeah, he he he's Swedish, but he was right. actually over here. Okay. So yeah, so so he actually diagnosed. He said, right, you've got Lyme, right? Right, and Lyme, and we'll go into the, what Lyme really is. But he said, you got it, no problem at all. And he came up with a potion of uh, a mixture of herbal pills and potions, and that was probably about three years ago. And I took that for two months. I went and saw him again, and he tested me again. He said, it's gone. Right. Really? He said, this doesn't normally happen because normally it takes six months, but it's gone. As far as I'm concerned, you are clean. I went, wow, isn't that brilliant? So I thought, great, great, great. So I was really good. I, did, I felt completely different for about nine months. And, and then just for a film trip to Croatia, two weeks beforehand, suddenly I just dipped. Bosh, it came back again. So I thought, oh my goodness. And since then, it keeps on coming back. So. He's, what he, whatever, whatever he did would work very, very well, but obviously he hasn't got longevity. He hasn't How actually fully... How long did fully, it last for then? Last about, that lasted nine months. Um, so I've taken the plunge and I've gone for the full blood test. Um, His next step was a full I blood test. Got, so blood I mean, taken in the UK so went to a lab in Germany. We were there when he got the, the result back. The Something people are not aware of are the co-infections. There can be up to 300 of them. And within three days, I had a complete diagnosis of what was wrong with me. It was facts. It was exactly what it was. So hold on a second. Why couldn't you have this done in the UK? So I mentioned about blood tests. In the UK, they, they have two types of blood tests. It's the, blo the, the Western blot test and the Lisa test. And, and I'm no medical expert, but I've led to believe there's probably at least 30, if not 50% of people who have these blood tests, the results come back as a false negative. So they're telling you you haven't got it, but you have got it. And in some situations, they could be a false positive, but predominantly they are false negatives because the, the, disease, the, 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 the bacteria, the Lyme, is hiding away in the body. So it's very hard to, to find, and it's also very, it's very much depends on the mood you're in as well, type of thing. So therefore, these blood tests are probably not worth having in the UK. So I thought, and I knew this, so hence I went okay. to Germany. It's quite exciting, actually. I just had an email through from a company in Germany who specialise in tick-borne diseases, and they come up with a list, uh, a list of things I should be tested for. And uh, so here's a list. It's quite extensive, but uh, and they just told me that I should have these specific tests. And if I just read them off, um, they're slightly complicated. Um, so we've got Borreliosis Elispot, Borreliosis Sarispot, CD3 and CD57, whatever that means. But there's other things there, like um, which is slightly embarrassing on, on film, but chlamydia uh, pneumonia. Uh, so that's an interesting one. Um, then we've got Microplasma. And we got, well, I can't pronounce the rest of that anyway. So also, the last one is Coxsachia virus. So there's about seven or eight different blood tests there. So uh, I'm going to take the plunge. Um, normally, most people would just have the top three, the tier one, that the main disease is tested. But um, I've decided to go and have them all done because I just want to know what the heck's going on with my body. And, and I feel that um, after years and years of suffering from this, I have Lyme disease. But I just want somebody to tell me that I've actually got it because I've had two blood tests um, in the UK and they've come back as negative. Knowing what he has is one thing, knowing how to treat it is another. Doctors say antibiotics all the way. That's how survival expert Ray Mears told us he got rid of his chronic Lyme. To get a clinical perspective, last year we went to the British Deer Society AGM to speak to retired cardiac surgeon and outgoing chairman, Professor Michael Thick. Well, I I'm, was brought up through the conventional school of medicine, so I have a fairly clear view about um, alternative medicine, which is that it is not properly evidence-based, that um, even the NHS has finally said we're not going to pay for that anymore, even though people like it a lot. 
I agree it's less intrusive, but there's little efficacy in it. And I would seriously recommend that your first line of call ought to be conventional medicine before you think of anything else. Uh, not all ticks are necessarily in, in going to infect you if they bite you. So the, there's a, the story is a little more complex than C. tick must be Borrelia, that's not the case. Nonetheless, you should be very vigilant about the fact that you might be bitten and if you think you have or you've got the symptoms of, that you just can't explain, then go and ask for help. It's perfectly legitimate. It's uh, about 10 o'clock, just about to go to bed. Uh, I've been home since about uh, 6 o'clock and all I want to do is go to sleep. Um, I've nodded off a few times, but I'm desperately trying to keep myself awake. Um, but I, once again, I've got a very, very thick head. Uh, it's pulsating a wee bit at the moment. So it's been quite a long, tough day, actually. And, uh, and the back of my eyes are aching, but it's just that constant thick head. I've taken a couple of paracetamol things today just to kind of help me through the meetings. But anyway, the problem I have is that uh, I'll just go and lie in bed and I will not be able to sleep. So I read a book till for a couple of hours and I eventually will drop off, but it's just annoying that uh, I'm not catching up with my sleep. It's very hard for the doctor to actually know he's got Lyme. I, I wrote an article, two articles in the Rifle Shooter magazine about six months ago. And I've had about six people ask me to send them the copy of the article to give to their doctor. Tim Pilbeam, he's got it. And see this, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that. So I want some antibiotics now. The doctor's going, oh, wow, really? Okay. The other problem, which is, which is really, really worrying for a, for a hunter, is if I go into a doctor and say, one minute I feel really, really quite good, I've just run 50 miles and yeah, I've just kind of conquered Everest. And next minute I feel pretty quite poor and I don't want to do, and I'm pathetic and all I want to do is sit down. And you say, well, that word, that D word comes up, the depression word comes up. Oh, I think, I think you're depressed. Really? Now, if you're a firearms holder, as soon as that word is mentioned, this is where it gets really quite scary because the police now are obviously asking uh, for references from your doctor. So on your record, if, it's, if he mentions that D word, he, will have, he, he has to say, well, this chap may have some form of depression. I know it's a more acceptable word and there's various different types of, uh, of depression, but you have depression. It's on your FAC license. And they say, hang on a minute, is this chap, oh, oh, hang, and he'll probably say, yes, he's absolutely fine. So. You've got to be a wee bit careful how you approach your doctor, in other words. Because you want to say, I think I've got depression. And very often, it's actually, it's actually misdiagnosed as depression. Oh, wait, well, you, you, because you're up and down. But in fact, the reason why you're up and down is because you've got Lyme disease. Just arrived in Brighton to see uh, a Lyme specialist called Judy. I've been speaking to Judy for, for a few weeks. And I'm really intrigued to actually speak to somebody who really understands what a Lyme goes through. There's so much there. There's, there's, there's Lyme disease, there's co-infections, there's lots of other things going on if you've got Lyme disease. So I'm really looking forward to speaking to somebody who really knows what they're talking about. The people that come to you, yeah. is there a typical sign of they have Lyme? You can turn around and say, that person has got Lyme. Um, I think... Basically, when they come to me and tell me that they have got every symptom under the sun that changes constantly, you know, they, that, that is quite typical of Lyme, is that the symptoms will be constantly changing and that they've tried everything, they've been to every doctor, they've done everything. I can pretty much be sure they've got Lyme disease or Lyme is playing a, a part in what's going on with them for sure. Um, so then we generally would send them off for an arm and labs test and I think, you know, after I don't know how many I've done, I might have had two negatives out of hundreds of positives. So, you know, it's, you can pretty much tell if there's massive fatigue, joint pain that moves around, you know, unexplained rashes that come and go, you know, even psychological things, rages, you know, inexplicable, you know, lows, despair and rages. Um, you know, this terrible nerve pain because obviously, you know, these infections can affect the nerves and get into the myelin and, and all the rest of it. They love the central nervous system. So any of those type of sy symptoms, you know, the burning feet, 
this is a common one. All these weird symptoms that just change, headaches, um, you know, you name it. And then you know it's not going to be one thing. You were talking about the, the testing process and what was very sobering, what we said before we started the chat, was the fact that so many people are off work yeah. because of, of chronic Lyme and yeah. therefore the tests are very expensive and then for, mm. for them to actually afford them is, is, is a problematic. Yeah. Um, what is the sort of, what is the simplest and cheapest route to actually find out whether you've got chronic Lyme, you're suffering from, from Lyme? Well, um, you know, many people, they, they want to see something in black and white. They want a piece of paper that will say, you, you know, you have got these bacteria. And that's what they want to see. And, you know, there are labs, quite reliable labs in Germany that can, can do these tests. And um, largely um, where people request them, that's what we do. But um, Dr. Dietrich Klinghart, he uses autonomic response testing. And this is a way of, of using the person's muscle testing, which you do through an intermediate person. Um, and you can actually test them to whether they've got Lyme and co-infections. And you can actually find where in the body these infections are. And that's actually probably the cheapest way you're ever going to do a Lyme test. Um, I'm, I've actually moved into that realm. I've started up a, a practice with my colleague um, and we do this ART testing now um, because it just saves t you know, a, a real a lot of money for the clients because um, we can test everything within, within the consultation. But if people want to see it in black and white, then there's nowhere in the NHS because the, um, the current tests that they do over here tests for an antibody response. And the first thing the Lyme does is knock out the antibody response. How desperate are people when they come to see you? They're pretty desperate. You know, shame, you know, some of these people, they've spent thousands of pounds. They've traveled the world. They have done so much to try and get well. You know, it's really, it's very, very sad to see in a lot of cases. They are pretty desperate, you know, and um, they just want their health back. They just want to get back to work. They just want to have a normal life. And, you know, the crippling fatigue that comes with these infections, you know, is just terrible. I thought I knew a lot about Lyme, but there's so much more out there. And uh, I think that, it, to me, it does affect so many different people. I wasn't aware that the people in the street, the people in towns are affected with Lyme. I don't know why, there's no reasoning behind it. It's not just the door walkers, it's not just the hunters, like myself. It's, it's affecting so many more people. And uh, I think the, the biggest takeaway for me personally, where I've been fighting it, and, and I'm, I've resigned my life that I'm going to be feeling pretty miserable for the rest of my life, and I'm, all I'm doing is trying to find something which I can manage the, 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 the symptoms, the disease. In fact, there's actually some things out that I could do an awful lot more. So I'm, I'm going to investigate Lyme disease a bit more and hopefully find something which will actually um, just allow me to have a better quality of life going into the future. The following week, Judy starts Tim's treatment. It's called Autonomic Response Testing, or ART, that uses what's called applied kinesiology. This is backed up with a host of supplements and a lactose, gluten and alcohol-free diet. It looks unorthodox, but when people are having ozone and stem cell treatment, this is relatively cheap, accessible and, most importantly, Tim has faith. I could become a monk in about two months' time. <laughs> I like my beer. I love. I love my bread. I love my butter. So look, you can you can rock that look. I do think so. <laughs> so that could. I mean, I've, I've got friends who who have done that. They've they've gone down that route. No sugar. No no alcohol. Um, no 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 gluten. The whole works because they say I've got to try something to stop this flicking disease. And if, if I feel better for the sake of not having those, so be it. And I could well be in that situation. I, I didn't care because I'm not going to carry on my rest of my life feeling like this. It's not going to work. I can't keep on masking it. So that's how it is. Lyme disease shows itself in many ways. It may never show itself at all, but there are triggers, stress being the big one. The best thing, of course, is prevention. Check yourself and know how to remove a tick if you find one. In the description below this film, we've added some yeah. useful links that may help. Yeah. Please look out for our new Absolutely. podcast, oh, which will include all like of so Tim's really and Judy's interview. Work. I'm so hungry, I'm so thirsty, haven't drunk anything for about four hours. We need to get home and have a beer. Way. <laughs>